Hey guys! So in this section, we will go over different types of valvular heart diseases. First, we'll go over things that are common for all valvular diseases and then go in details for each disease. We'll go over mitral stenosis, mitral regurgitation, aortic stenosis, aortic regurgitation, and mitral valve prolapse. We won't cover tricuspid or pulmonary valve disease since they're not very high yield in USMLE. Being said that, let's start with what is common for all valvular heart disease. All valvular disease have similar symptoms like shortness of breath, fatigue, rails, dyspnea, and many more, or patient may be asymptomatic. All these symptoms are very nonspecific. So for the exam, they have to give you other clues if they want to ask you a question about one of these diseases. Next common thing is diagnostic test. For all valvular heart disease, best initial test is transthoracic echo, followed by transesophageal echo, which is more specific. Angiography is the most accurate test for all valvular heart diseases. So I'm not going to tell you in each disease that best initial test for this is echo and most accurate test is angiography. One more thing is chest x-ray or EKG are nonspecific. You cannot diagnose any valvular disease using x-ray or EKG. So you don't have to memorize what is the x-ray finding for each disease. Now let's look at the management. Management is also very similar. For mitral or aortic regurgitation, management is same. You would manage both types of patients with vasodilators like ACE inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers. If any of these patients have heart failure symptoms, then you can add digoxin or diuretics. Before heart starts to dilate, you want to do surgery for these patients because once the heart dilates, the change is irreversible. So that's the management for aortic and mitral regurgitation. Now let's look at the stenosis. You want to decrease patient's preload with diuretics and salt restriction. Surgery is the definitive treatment for both. For mitral valve, you want to do balloon valvuloplasty. For aortic stenosis, you want to replace the valve because aortic stenosis is mostly due to calcification. One more thing I want to tell you guys before we jump onto specific disease is make sure you can identify each of these murmurs because they might give you audio clip of murmur and ask you about the management of that patient. So at least know the differences between stenosis and regurgitation by listening at the audio clip. There is a little trick. I didn't put it on, on the flow chart, but I will go over before we start. Trick is knowing the location for each murmur. For example, aortic murmurs are best heard at right sternal border of second intercoastal space. Pulmonary murmurs are best heard at left sternal border of second intercoastal space. Tricuspid murmurs are best heard at the left sternal border of fifth intercoastal space. And mitral murmurs are best heard at mid-clavicular line of fifth intercoastal space. Again, one more time. Aortic murmurs are best heard at right sternal border of second intercoastal space. Pulmonary murmurs are best heard at left sternal border of second intercoastal space. Tricuspid murmurs are best heard at left sternal border of fifth intercoastal space. And mitral murmurs are best heard at mid-clavicular line of fifth intercoastal space. You also want to know where this murmur radiates to. So all aortic valve murmur radiates to your carotids, and all mitral murmurs radiates to your axilla. So from this information, you can figure out which valve they're talking about. And now you want to identify different murmur sounds. Simple rule is, all regurgitation murmurs have blowing sound that sounds like you're blowing air and water. And stenosis sounds like liquid is trying to escape, but there's an obstruction. Make sure you listen to different types of murmur sounds. There are some good videos on YouTube that I suggest you listen to. Okay, so these were all similarities among all valvular heart diseases. 
Now let's take a look at the differences. So here, we'll go over most common causes, specific murmurs, and specific symptoms for given valvular disease. We will also cover management, but it's similar to what we talked about, so it'll be a good review. Different maneuvers have different effects on each of these murmur, so don't forget to watch your video about murmurs and maneuvers. Being said that, let's start with mitral stenosis. Most common cause of mitral stenosis is rheumatic fever. Murmur for mitral stenosis is described as opening snap followed by mid-diastolic rumble. All these patients have huge left atrium, so symptoms would be dysphagia due to atrium compressing esophagus or hoarseness due to atrium compressing recurrent laryngeal nerve. These patients are also more likely to get systemic embolism due to higher chance of AFib. Remember, these patients are specific for mitral stenosis. There are more symptoms, but you want to focus on these. As we said before, manage these patients with diuretics and salt restriction. If symptoms are severe, balloon valvuloplasty is the definitive treatment. So this is it for mitral stenosis. All right, now let's move on to mitral regurgitation. Here, most common cause is mitral valve prolapse. Second most common cause is ischemic heart disease. Mitral regurgitation patients get specific pansystolic murmur radiating to the axilla. Pansystolic is the same as holosystolic, which means throughout the systole. Here, patients don't get any specific symptoms. You treat these patients with vasodilators. First line of drugs are ACE inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers. If these patients have CHF symptoms, you can also add diuretics. You want to make sure that patient gets surgery before heart starts to dilate because once heart dilates, it is irreversible. Now let's move on to aortic stenosis. Most common cause for aortic stenosis is age. Second most common cause for this is bicuspid aortic valve. Make sure you remember that because they may describe bicuspid aortic valve in older patient and tell you nonspecific symptoms like fatigue, palpitations, or dyspnea and ask you question like what kind of murmur do you expect to find. So no common causes. In these patients, you can hear crescendo, decrescendo murmur radiating to the neck. These patients can have three different presentations, angina, CHF, and syncope. From these three, most common presentation is angina. CHF has the worst prognosis. If these patients have CHF symptoms, give them diuretics. Definitive treatment is valve replacement. Don't do valvuloplasty on these patients because stenosis is due to calcification. Now let's move on to aortic regurgitation. Here, you want to remember that this is due to anything that makes the heart or aorta dilate. You also want to remember that aortic regurgitation is associated with Marfan syndrome, syphilis, and alkalosing spondylitis. With aortic regurgitation, patient might have blowing decrescendo murmur, mid-systolic flow murmur, or Austin Flint murmur, which is mid or late diastolic rumble. Don't remember names of murmurs like Austin Flint murmur, but make sure you can identify these murmurs by description. These patients also have wide pulse pressure, water hammer pulse, and head bobbing symptoms. Management is similar to mitral regurgitation, so you prescribe patients with vasodilator like ACE inhibitor or ARB. Use digoxin or diuretic if patients have CHF symptoms and surgery before heart starts to dilate. So this is it for aortic regurgitation. Our last topic is mitral valve prolapse. Most common cause is congenital. This is also associated with Marfan's and Ehler-Danlos. Your pathognomonic murmur is mid-systolic click. These patients get chest pain. No one knows why these patients get chest pain, but from all valvular diseases, this is the only disease where patients get chest pain. You can treat these patients with beta blockers. 
Definitive treatment is valve repair. So this ends our mitral valve prolapse. Make sure you know all the effects of different maneuvers on each of these murmurs. For that, we have made separate videos, so don't forget to watch that. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching this video, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions or need this flowchart, feel free to contact us at usmlysaver at gmail.com. We are currently working on more USMLE videos in this format. Make sure you subscribe so you can get updates about more videos. I hope you all have a great day and good luck studying for your USMLEs.